Uh, good morning. Um, my name is Dan McNamara, and uh, over these um, Wednesdays in August, while um, while we don't have mass cover, while Father Chris takes a well earned break, um, I'm going to be leading you through um, the spiritual exercises of Ignatius of Loyola. Uh, I can't be with you in person this week or live this week. Uh, there's a meeting that I needed to be at uh, for work. So instead, um, you've got this recording, but um, I would have recorded this a few times, so it would have been much better than what you would have got in, la in, the, in the life form anyway. Um, so last week, uh, for those of you who, who, weren't, who weren't at last Wednesday's uh, spiritual exercise, we, um, we recapped on Ignatius, who he was, uh, somebody who was from a military background, who, who wasn't, um, wasn't what you call a traditional holy person, whatever that is. And um, he came to he came to have a really intimate relationship with Jesus while he was recuperating um, in hospital after some injuries he, he got in, in battle. Um, and after a year's bed rest just reading about the saints, he, he decided he decided that he wanted to give himself to God. But he wanted to put himself second and put God first in, in all his decisions. Uh, he wanted to be like one of those saints he, he was reading about. He was inspired by their lives. And I think there's really something we can take from them, the inspiration of the saints. You know, at their simplest form, the saints are, uh, are examples of what it is to be a good follower of Jesus. Examples for us to follow. Um, so we should be like Ignatius, being inspired by these holy people who have gone before us. So he came up with these spiritual exercises. He was big into exercising the body to stay fit and, and trim, to exercising the mind. But he also said, what about that God bit of you? The soul. Yeah. And he said, much like with your mind and your body, that needs to be exercised too for it to be in top form. So he came up with this exercise programme, the spiritual exercises. And we are squeezing in this daily month-long uh, exercise pro exercise program into into half an hour a week 20 minutes a week so last week we did all of um week one 15 20 minutes and we'll do the same here again this gives us a good taste but um if you like what you're hearing uh we we'd get so much more out of it you'd get so much more out of it if if you're doing it as um, as ignatius intended there's lots of places that you can do these spiritual exercises uh the sherman lift community in storrington be a good place to start uh, they have daily spirituality days, daily Ignatian uh, spirituality workshop days. Uh, so it'd be worth checking out their website and see what they've got going on at the moment. Um, things might have changed with the situation we're in, but that would be a good place to start. So let's let's crack on. Let's um, let's turn our eyes to God. So I invite you to. Like we did last week, if you want to stand up, sit down, but to take a few moments to close your eyes and concentrate on your breathing. Breathing in through your mouth and out through your nose. Try to concentrate on nothing but breathing. Center all of your thought on this one activity. And how is your body today? Aches, pains? Does anything that you don't want on your body today? Offer those aches and pains to God. He freely takes them. And your mind. How is your mind today? Is there any fog or cloudiness? Is it too busy? Is it not busy enough? If there's anything on your mind today that you don't want there. Again, offer it to God, he freely takes it.
And then that God bit of you, the soul, the spirit, there's no one God compartment to us, but how are things going with you and God the Father, Jesus, the Holy Spirit today? And let's offer this time for the glory of God. And let's ask that we can grow in a closer relationship with God. And that that God part of us can be on top, fighting fit for. So these spiritual exercises, it's very much sitting in the chair and with your eyes closed and it's all going on in your head. So I do invite you to get yourself comfortable and I'll talk you through it. It'll probably take about five-ish bit more minutes. So in the second week, we're thinking all about Jesus. And today we're going to think about the nativity. I'm going to get, I know it's blistering heat, but we're going to Christmas. And imagine in, in your mind, Mary, Joseph, a donkey, and then travelling to Bethlehem from Nazareth. Now Mary's just about to give birth, so she's heavily pregnant. That wouldn't be an easy journey on a donkey, someone who's just about to give birth. But for the reasons we, we read in the various gospel narratives, it was a necessary journey. Go into some detail about, about this road. What can you see? Valleys, hills, is it dark? Is it hot? And now let's skip on a little bit and they've arrived in Bethlehem, looked for a place and they finally got somewhere. They're in this place where animals are kept, stables at a hotel. And Jesus has now been born. Look at the, the infant baby where he is. And look at the surroundings in which he's in. Who is Jesus? And knowing what we do about who Jesus is, and who Jesus was at that, in, that, in that moment. Why is he in these surroundings? The expectation for the Messiah, as we well know, everybody who's here this morning isn't new to church. As we well know, the, uh, the, the, the hope for saviour or someone who was going to come in glory of grandeur but instead he's in these surroundings the question ignatius is trying to lead us to is who has jesus come for who is jesus's first Who's the first person he goes to? Is it the king or the, the ruler in that area 
living in glory? Or is it somebody else? And if that's the case, what does that say to us as followers of Jesus today? As those who follow him, who are trying to be like him, who are trying to put his will first and ours second. What does that mean for us today? And we really are fast forwarding through this narrative. The first set of visitors have arrived. And again, Ignatius is hammering in this point again. The first set of visitors are shepherds, normal people. Yeah, they're the real average Joe of the day. And they're the first set of visitors. And the angels came to them first to say, look, you're invited to come. Jesus comes for normal people. Jesus goes out of his way to be in surroundings which they're comfortable in. So his message of the good news, of the love of his father, can get to them. So we're going to end in a few moments now. Before we leave that stable, just take a few more seconds to take in what you're seeing and glean any message or wisdom from that surrounding. So let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who is in heaven, holy is your name. May your kingdom come, and may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. So, um, I'd like you to come back to 2020 now, to literally hot Bognor Regis and Clinton. Um, that was week two. That was week two, done in all about 10 minutes. So um, next week, it'll be week three. I promise I'll be with you in live form then. And um, uh, we have uh, we have prayer again on, on Friday. Uh, Pauline or Kathleen will be, will be leading that, so I really look forward to that. But between now and Friday, uh, let's really make um, let's make a pledge to each other. What Father Chris is always talking about when, when Mass begins on Sunday. Let's reach out to each other in prayer. Let's pray for each other. And I promise I'll pray for you. Uh, so please do pray for me. But let's, between now and Friday, especially when we're when we're praying for our friends and loved ones to remember each other. Uh, I'd really appreciate that. Uh, so I'll see you next week. Um, I look forward to it. Bye bye.